Spurs and U.S. men's national team head coach Greg Popovich had some very strong comments on the president in an interview with the nation on Monday. Here's part of what he said. Quote, this man in the Oval Office is a soulless coward who thinks that he can only become large by belittling others. We have a pathological liar in the White House, unfit intellectually, emotionally, and psychologically to hold this office, and the whole world knows it, especially those around him every day. The people who work with this president should be ashamed because they know it better than anyone just how unfit he is, and yet they choose to do nothing about it. This is their shame most of all. Will Kane is back with us to join the conversation. Hey, Will. Hi. Max, I'm going to start with you. Has Pop gone too far? No, he's showing leadership. Greg Popovich is a brave man and an honorable man and a leader of an excellent organization. And by the way, a military man who believes in accountability. And at a time where some people are cowed about not mincing words about the way they feel, he's showing you exactly how he feels, particularly about statements because the president later said he wasn't sure if what he said about Greg Popovich is responding to uh, Trump saying that that he doesn't know if, uh, if Ob or he said Obama didn't make the calls to the bereaved families that he did. Um, and, and then later said when pressed, well, I don't know if he did or he didn't. Popovich is a military guy. He didn't get any military deferments, draft deferments. Um, and, uh, and he's talking about accountability. If you speak and you speak recklessly and you're not accountable and then after the fact you say, well, I was told, particularly when you're the president, that doesn't fly to Greg Popovich. Um, he's showing leadership. And by the way, in, in this country, speaking truth to power is something Americans pride themselves on. I mean, the idea that, well, it's the president of the United States, there needs to be a certain level of decorum. Um, Popovich's sensibilities here seem to be offended because the behavior by the office holder here is, in Popovich's view, pretty clearly debasing the office. And so, uh, once again, uh, as the leader of a successful organization where they put in the work, where people are accountable, as a former military man, the behavior of the president here doesn't come up to Popovich's standards, and he is not mincing words telling you about it. You know, um, well, just be go ahead, Stephen A. Go ahead. Well, just because he, he's not mincing words doesn't mean that uh, he's entirely right to go about the business of doing it that way. Um, I not only respect Greg Popovich, I revere the man. He's a leader. He's a champion, uh, personified. He's a lot of great things. And I don't have a problem with how he has dissected what he has witnessed from this president on numerous occasions. I have no issue for it, with it whatsoever. But as I've told you in the past, Max Kellerman, you got to take into consideration whether or not you want to be listened to or you want to be heard. Now, Popovich may not have that objective. He may just be speaking from the heart, and I can respect that. But at the same time, when you are a leader, you have to take into account how your words are going to be received from those outside of the individual you're talking about and how productive or counterproductive that's going to be. I have no issue whatsoever with anybody who dissects uh, the behavior of our president. His behavior has been embarrassing. It's been disgraceful. Um, it's, not, it, it's not fitting of the president of the United States in terms of how he has conducted himself. But when you engage in name calling, the very people that you may be trying to reach, and they could be in the millions in terms of those who voted for him, in terms of those who support him, et cetera, et cetera, they easily and summarily dismiss your argument when they're able to lean on words, derogatory or otherwise, that you may label the president with. There is a way to dissect and pick apart and excoriate an individual or an administration without going to that level. Because ultimately they'll get caught up in the name calling as opposed to the substance behind your argument. Now, I'm not judging Greg Popovich for it. He is a military man. He has served this country admirably. He has served us as basketball fans just as admirably with the great work that he has done with the San Antonio Spurs. He has a right to say what he said, um, and, and he has validity to what he's saying. All I'm saying is the president is going to do what he's going to do. In order to affect him and affect change, you have to reach those surrounding him, whether it's in the House of Representatives, whether it's those in his administration, whether it's constituency out there, 
you have to be able to reach those people. And if you give them an excuse to point to the name calling, then it could potentially become counterproductive. And that's what we have to be mindful of, particularly when he's going to be representing our nation as the coach and he has to travel overseas and what have you. And that may be the very reason why he's done it. I'm not judging Popovich in any way at all because I agree with him. I'm simply saying I want him to be heard, not just listened to. And I don't want him to do things that will enable those who tacitly or otherwise support our president to dismiss what he's saying just because they're upset at the name calling. That's what we have to be concerned about, in my opinion.